Hey there, Ashley with SVJator here. If you are new to the world of animation and you've never used SVJator before, this is a tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how to create a new project, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the UI, and then we're going to create our very first animation. Let's do it. If this is the first time that you're opening up SVJator, this is probably what you're going to see, but we're just going to go ahead and create a new project. You can either import a file or what we're going to do is actually create uh, an empty canvas file. So I'm going to name this uh, maybe like bounce and then I'm going to leave this, this, this size at 300 by 300. We're going to hit create and we have our 300 by 300 canvas. Now, SVJator's UI has a few different parts. So here on the left, we are going to see all of our elements, all of our layers. So as we add circles and shapes and all kinds of stuff, this is where we're going to be able to select those. We also have the library, which is where we can upload different files. And we're going to talk about that uh, a little later. And then we can also see up here the, the tools. So these are our basic transform tools uh, or like selection tools, our pen. We have some of the basic shapes here. We have text and then we have the, the hand. The hand is basically a way to like uh, navigate your, your viewport here. On the right side here, we can also see that we have this percentage number. And this is something that I use a lot. So for example, we have fit with the one, we have zoom 100% with zero, zoom in and zoom out. So if I wanted to fit this uh, canvas into my viewport, I hit one. If I wanted to see it at 100% its size, I hit zero. And then with plus icon and minus icons, I can also zoom in and zoom out. You can also do this with your mouse if you have a, a mouse with a, with a wheel. And then also if you click that, that wheel, you can also use the, the hand to kind of like navigate your, your animation. Now, if I insert a circle, let's do that. I can, if I select it, select it here on the left side, I'm going to see all of its different properties. So I can see its position and its size. I can see all of the different properties that I can animate. And then I can see also its appearance. So I can go ahead here and select a different fill color. Let's say I want it to be blue. And then for the stroke color, I'm going to have like a, maybe like a darker blue, something like that. And then I can also change the, the stroke width. So maybe like four. Now there's other, there's other things that we can talk about a little bit later, but the biggest thing here, one of the most common properties is the opacity property, which is right here. So we're going to be animating that in later videos. Now let's make our first animation. This is going to be a very simple bounce animation. And the way you do that is you need to make sure that you're, you're selecting the right shape on the left side here. And then I'm going to click here, animate. So the first thing that we need to think about is like, what do I actually want this animation to look like? So before we do this, let's think about how this is going to work like. So this is, like I said, very simple bouncing animation. So I want it to go down and up in a loop. And then to make it a little more realistic, I think it should get squished a little bit, like as it hits the, the floor. So for that, let me introduce to you the origin point. This little circle that is right here, we call that the origin point. So uh, if for some reason it's not centered in your shape, you can always go here and click that and that is going to center it. So we're going to hit that. But in this case, I want it to, as it hits the floor, I think it should get squished a little bit. So I'm going to put the origin point all the way to the top. And then if we want to scale this, uh, with our, with our, um, if we wanted to scale this with our, with our transform tool here, we can do something like this. So as, as it hits the floor, it kind of like gets squished just a little bit, just to make it a little more realistic. So now that we have the origin point in the right place, let's go ahead and animate its position first. We can either go here to animate and select position, or we can do shift P. That adds a new keyframe to our timeline at zero. The keyframe is going to get added wherever you have your, your little marker here. 
So I'm going to go forward to half a second and I'm going to add a second keyframe. This time I'm going to move with my transform tool the circle down and you're going to see in this with this blue line that is going to be the trajectory of the animation. So if we play that, we can see that it goes from that position to the next position here. And now for the bounce effect, we definitely wanted to go up to the same position that we had originally. So I'm going to select the first keyframe, do Command C or Control C, and then Command V or Control C if you're in Windows. Classic copy paste keyboard shortcuts. Now I wanted to, when it hits the, let's say our imaginary floor that we have here, it's going to get a little squished. So let's do a scale animation. So it's either going to be here under scale or we can do shift S. And then the initial scale is just going to be one to one, but then as it hits the floor, that bottom part is going to do like a little bit of a squish like that. And then I'm going to do exactly the same I did for the position. I'm going to copy and paste that initial scale. And now we can see our animation. See it one more time. Now, I don't want this to be three seconds long because I don't need it to be three seconds long. So I the, the way to change the, the, the length of the actual animation is we're just going to move this little line all the way to one. And then by default, this is going to loop. So we can see it as it, as it bounces up and down. If for some reason you're not seeing it loop, make sure that you are you have this little option on. So if it's blue, it's on. And if it's not, it's just going to play once. Now, if we wanted to add a second, a second ball or any kind of shape, let's say we add another ellipse, we can also copy the, the fill color by using the keyboard shortcut I for the for the eyedropper. And then we can we can group these two shapes together by doing command G or ungroup them by doing shift command G. But let's leave them grouped. So command G. And the cool thing is that you can actually animate these two shapes. Like each individual shape can get some kind of animation, but then you can animate the entire group. So animating the two shapes is not going to affect the individual animation of any of the elements that is inside of it. So that's definitely a thing, a good thing to know if you wanted to make a little bit more of a complex animation. Now, the last thing I'll mention to cover the basics is if for some reason I wanted my canvas to be slightly different in size, I can always click on canvas here and then change the size. So if I click here, it's going to change proportionally. So I can do 400 by 400 and make sure you unclick it to use the keyboard shortcut to fit. And I can also do, uh, if I don't want it to be proportional, I can do maybe 400 by 300. So it doesn't matter at what point in your project you're at, you're always going to be able to change that. And then from here, I can also change the color of the actual background of my canvas. So maybe I want like a, like a lighter blue like that. Yeah, that covers the, the basics of, uh, of SVJator here. And that is our very first SVJator animation. In this video, we covered how to make a new project. I give you a quick walkthrough of the UI and then we created a very simple animation. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create slightly more complex illustrations, and then we're gonna start animating different properties of our shapes. I'll see you there.